Hi folks, and welcome to your Jersnet immediate post-match reaction pod, coming to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering. My name's Alec Anderson, and I'm speaking to you from the room right next door to the one in which I've just watched Rangers 3-2 victory over Kilmarnock at Rugby Park in tonight's SPFL Premiership match. A match probably best summed up by the excuses I'm now going to give you, as you know, it's usually Colin and myself doing these post-match reaction pods outside the stadium, and uh, we'll tell you, don't judge us too harshly if we get some of the details wrong, because not just fans jumping up and down round about, as the, the action in question took place up the, the far side of the park, or what seats weren't too good. Uh, well, tonight I watched that match from the comfort of my, my own sofa. Zero obstructions between uh, the sofa and my big television, and yet I watched most of the action through my fingers because, yet again, despite the fact Michael Beal is continuing this run, this great run uh, of results at the start of his career as Rangers manager, yet again the performance uh, wasn't the greatest. Put it this way, on Sunday, uh, with the very last kick of the ball, the seat I had in the North Stand at Hamden prevented me seeing the main stand side linesman flagging, so I didn't know it wouldn't have counted um, as this Aberdeen player went clean through on goal, just as a free voice final whistle. It looked like uh, we were going to concede a disastrous equaliser to a team we just played against uh, with that one-man advantage for half an hour or more. Same again tonight. It was the, the fact that uh, I didn't know John McLaughlin was so close to his goals, the Sky cameras failed to pick up John McLaughlin. He wasn't on camera um, when in the fourth minute of injury time at the end of the game, Conor Golson turned towards his own goal and nodded the ball back towards what seemed to be a completely empty Rangers goal. It looked like, yet again, we're going to concede a calamitous equaliser to a team we've been playing against for over half an hour uh, with, a, with a man advantage. Didn't happen. Uh, you know, John did uh, appear on camera, making his appearance kind of stage right. And he's a big luminous yellow strip. And the fact, despite the fact that all his outfield teammates are wearing this kind of high-vis Denver Broncos glowing you know, day-glow kit, he managed to pass the ball straight to a Kilmarnock player. Kevin Clancy, the referee, another reason a lot of Rangers fans were having palpitations tonight before the game even kicked off. Fair play to him. I think he knows the size of our support and just exactly how many heart attacks were taking place across the country. Our NHS is under too much pressure as it is. So Kevin just uh, blew full time and we got away with that again. We got our victory. And it did feel that we got away with it despite the fact we had like 78 possession dominating the game uh, in terms of possession in much the same way we did on Sunday. But there remains this feeling that something's got to kind of crack. Listen, I don't know if you saw via the, the, the Rangers official Twitter account there was a little clip of a Rangers TV interview pre-match with Michael Beal uh, in an empty rugby park where the Kilmarnock PA system was playing Led Zeppelin's when the levy breaks. We feel as if a levy has got to break, a dam's got to bust. We can't keep conceding these goals. We can't, that's two goals uh, conceded in four of Michael Beal's eight games in charge. He's gone behind uh, in four of his games in charge. It can't keep happening like that. Eventually we're going to lose. The, 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 the dam of good results is going to bust or it's going to go the other way. What we're hoping for is eventually we're going to get that performance. Rangers are going to be the dam of attacking football that explodes onto an opponent completely washes them away in a, a four or five goal blitz. But yet yeah, we continue to sail down this kind of midpoint between the two. Um, Michael Beale is under pressure in terms of the, the injury list. You know, I've got an injury list that's kind of lands my ear. We've got an injury list that's a, a veritable first team is out of action at Ibrox, is, is on the treatment table. He's having trouble getting players in just now. You know, There's, there's probably a, a, a tension between what Giovanni van Bronckhurst had set up our recruitment department uh, to, to obtain from this window and you know, Michael Beale coming in at the last minute. He'll need something else, but we're not getting any players in uh, in this window, uh, in, in any kind of rapid, quick style. So we understand the position uh, that, that, that Michael Beals and we understand the difficulties he's facing, and there definitely is an upturn in the performance, despite uh, my, my gripes and moans, but it just feels as if we've kind of seen this movie before when Gio arrived, just over a year ago, when Gio uh, first arrived, we won seven straight league games, I think he, all in all, including Europe, we had a run of eight wins and maybe a draw in, in his first nine games, and, and Michael Beals getting to that point now. Um, Geo had a lot of those games that weren't very convincing, but because Celtic hadn't really kind of set the heather on fire at the point where Geo arrived before the winter break last season, we felt kind of pretty optimistic that just getting the, the wins was enough. We now know that's not the case. When we kicked off tonight, Celtic having kicked off um, a quarter of an hour earlier, they basically went one nothing up just as we kicked off. And that was the way the, the night continued. This is the thing we watched in the game on Sky. Uh, the scores clocking up. You've seen Celtic going 2 nothing up, 3 nothing up. And we're trailing or we're drawing or we're looking like we're going to concede an equaliser. 
Uh, one of the excuses or rationalisations I'd offered uh, on the preview pod for this match uh, last night on Jersey Night was that maybe Aberdeen had actually turned a corner. They, they played really well on Sunday, but actually did quite well to beat them. But we're, we're underestimating uh, this Aberdeen side, and they were four nothing down at half time uh, at Time Castle today. That's Time Castle where Rangers won four uh, nothing earlier this season. So no, that excuse is out the window. We're just getting through games and no more against opponents who shouldn't provide us with this much trouble. Case in point tonight, also a case in point with Michael Beale's uh, increasingly kind of fork tongue statements to the media. Um, he's apart from saying, you know, yesterday that Alan McGregor was his, uh, the best goalkeeper in Scotland. I mean, he was the man he was going to be picking for most games this season. Next game, John McLaughlin's in goals. And the reason John McLaughlin's in goals, we all know, is because we're playing against a Derek McInnes team. Come on, I've got these big defenders. They're going to favour set pieces as an attacking option. Michael Beale then says in his Sky pre-match interview tonight, I hope come on, come at us, that'll give us more space to get in behind them. Seemed a bit bold, uh, actually seemed completely <laughs> idiotic after the first five, six minutes, which come on, were averaging a corner like every 90 seconds, just basically calibrating, they, had a, they, they opened, they, they missed an open goal from, what, from one of those corners, uh, a really easy header, they were just kind of calibrating their corners eventually, they, they took the lead in all of six minutes. And John McLaughlin, the man brought in to uh, you know, take those crosses out of the air to, to command his box in a way that we, we, we knew Alan McGregor wasn't doing uh, on Sunday. He was nowhere to be seen. He couldn't even get through his own defenders. He couldn't get into the ruck in the six-yard box in any way whatsoever. Uh, he, was, he was getting far enough out to leave his goal completely open. He had a really bad game tonight and goalkeeper is now becoming a major position uh, of concern for all Rangers supporters. Kilmarnock, in a reversal of what we did on Sunday, when Rangers at Hamden uh, you know, had 12 minutes of real pressure to start the game on Aberdeen, and this, the, the most we got out of it was Fashion Sakala hitting the post. Kilmarnock had a purple patch of six minutes, and they took the lead. And this is a problem. There's still that fragility about this Rangers team. And there still seems to be a failure to understand that just because Kilmarnock are second bottom of the, the league in Scotland, it doesn't mean they're not going to come out and get absolutely wired into us. There seems to be this kind of contradiction where a lot of Rangers fans are unhappy at the number of players who've been at the club for so long. You know, some of them even, you know, before Stephen Gerrard arrived, and yet those players don't seem to have learned from the number of times they've been to Rugby Park, started poorly. Usually we take the lead in these games at Rugby Park uh, when they've been in the top flights since we come back into the top flight, and then Kilmarnock will come back as an equaliser or whatever. If you start badly, you set the tone and it nearly cost us again tonight. Part of that setting the tone, and in my opinion, is the fact that we left out Ryan Jack and, and Malik Tillman from a Sunday starting 11. I, I know that Ryan Jack played a full 120 at hand and he's got injury problems. He's, got, he's, he's probably still kind of coming back in terms of general fitness. But you need to set the tone. You need to something allow a player. Mal, um, Ryan Jack was man of the match on Sunday at Hamden. Let him come back in today and set the tone again and take him off at half time if we're two or three nothing up. Um, Malik Tillman, I know he didn't, you know, beat three guys in the box and square it for somebody to score the way he's been known to do uh, at Hamden on Sunday. He didn't have the best of games at Hamden on Sunday, but nevertheless, he dictated the pace, he dictated the tempo. Even if his passes were getting cut out, he was still getting forward passes. We were not at the races at all tonight in that first six minutes. It was actually quite frightening. Um, uh, come on, it went one nothing up. But fairness to Rangers, and I think fairness to Alfredo Morelos, another guy who, you know. Still isn't full fitness, and he's, he's he's come under a lot of pressure from uh, fans like myself this season. A lot of criticism, and tonight even he kind of he was in a lot of dichotomy in action. Where I thought, is he trying to get himself sent off again? Is is it bad Alfie who went to Easter Road, come on as a sub earlier this season, and, and cost us the points with his kind of petulance and a and a tacit desire to leave the club? Tonight he hit the deck within the first few seconds after kick off, was like, trying to get an opponent sent off, and he was clearly being riled by the East Stand at Kilmarnock, which is anybody who's been to Robert Park will tell you is full of 13 and 14 year olds who are just happy to have an opportunity to shout loudly and swear and say a few bad words. Alfie was getting wound up by them and wanted to engage with them. He was getting into petty squabbles with Kilmarnock players, and as we know, Alfie's not the most subtle in the world that. Um, getting himself uh, involved in fouls and what have you. He can't do it in any kind of sort of fly way, and he's got himself booked um, pretty early on. But then he scores and equalises and kind of transforms the game. Uh, credit where it's due. It's actually Fashion Sakala who transforms the game. He turns Ash Taylor inside. A, a brilliant uh, turn down the right wing uh, from Fashion, which allowed uh, James Tavernier to dink a beautiful ball um, over the top of the, the command of the fence to uh, Fashion on the run. He, he puts a brilliant ball across the six-yard box, dissecting the, the remaining command of defenders. And there's Alfie at the back post, taking it first time. 
just sweeping the ball in with his right his right foot, you know, just taking a kind of scooping it and shoveling it in, uh, into that uh, bottom corner. And away he goes to celebrate to that he stand at command like Kevin Clancy that if he's pulling him back and saying, no, you can't be doing that. And Alfie still wants to celebrate in front of uh, the opposition fans. You know, doesn't he get another book and gets away with it? And they're thinking, this is actually what we need. This lack of Bam Pottery, this failure to understand. I think Alfie actually does understand what happens at grounds like Tanadice and Easter Road. And, uh, and, and at certain times, like tonight, his, his willingness to get involved at least shows that Rangers aren't kind of pushovers in that respect. You know, we do have something, if not street smarts, at least a bit of Bam Pottery about us, uh, as I say. And we didn't, you know, we, we didn't increase the lead, but we certainly get back into the game before uh, half time. Second half, we come out, we absolutely dominated. It went up with 78% possession tonight, but a lot of it is just passing the ball about and kind of hoping the opposition are going to, you know, we're going to beat them on points, almost like a boxing match. We've got more of the ball, we've that, that, that counts, it's, it's goals that count. Um, and we seem to realise that early on when uh, Ryan Kent, and it's always great when uh, Ryan Kent actually gets a goal, but again, I had an amazing ball um, from. James Tavernier shouldn't be underestimated. The captain put a fantastic, it was a 70 yard pass. It looks like a punt up the park, a, a, a defensive clearance, but it isn't. John Lundstrom um, facing his own goal, kind of a, a bit of a, you know, um, kind of stramash outside our box as we're trying to clear our lines. But Lundstrom, a bit of coolness, gets up, nods it down um, to Tav, and Tav sends this lovely ball over to Ryan Kent, who's, the, the you know, clean through, but kind of over to the left wing. He pulls the ball back, looking, I think, for Fashion Sakala. It's a bad ball, completely misses Sakala. But there's uh, Alfie at the back, at the back post, at the right hand post. He pulls it back to try and to tee up Scott Arfield. He completely misses him as well. But Ryan Kent gets it back, controls it, and it's another right foot shot into the bottom corner. 2 1, looks fantastic. Another thing Michael Beale's been doing in a positive sense for Rangers, another positive pattern that is getting two quick goals. Well, we didn't get two quick goals, but um, about five or six minutes after we'd, we'd taken the lead in this game, Come on, let get players sent off. Um, some debate about it, you know, according to Derek McInnes, but uh, the, the, the fella Armstrong, they're already on a um, yellow card for a, you know, hauling down Ryan Kent in the first half. He just goes in on Borna Barris. I mean, Borna just digs the ball over the top of him. It's a, it's a forearm smash into Borna's jaw, you know, into his neck slash jaw, pushing the jaw back. It's actually terrible. I think it was worthy of a straight red card. Anyway, it's a, it's a definite second yellow. But even then, Borna gets dragged into a kind of squabble with Derek McInnes on the sideline, the commandment manager, you know, Armstrong himself, so obviously had done the usual thing of, well, you're at it, um, just, out of, just out of kind of sheer anger, but Borna's up, you know, wanting to fight the guy, and you're thinking, you're going to end up getting sent off, and I was pretty relieved when I saw Armstrong walking past uh, Alfie, and I thought Alfredo would maybe have a wee word and get a second yellow uh, for himself, but there's a, a wee bit of worry there, a bit of kind of naivety, which really, you know, Borna Barris has been here long enough to know how Scottish football works, um, just, just, a sheer lack of professionalism almost almost cost us. Uh, but then Borna is gets himself uh, down the wing. We, we'd worked the ball from the right hand side to Sakala, this uh, Kent, Arfield, everybody seemed to be involved in working the ball at the left hand side, and then Borna, one of those beautiful crosses as he stands it up for Alfredo, who just steps away from his man. We're all praising, we're all praising uh, Kamar Roof for his goal on Sunday because he has that, that coolness of mind, he just stops well, you know, all about him or are losing their minds, everybody else is moving about. He stops, takes his time, he just strokes a ball in the net against Aberdeen for the winner in the League Cup semi-final. Well, I think it's time we started praising Alfredo Morales for doing the same thing twice tonight, basically. Just finding the space, um, just getting away from his marker, and he, he nods at home from eventually what is close range. It's 3-1 to Rangers, and I think you're thinking, that's it. We're against 10 men, we're 3-1 th we're up, that should be it. Finally going to get to enjoy a game in its entirety, well, <laughs> the remaining 20-odd minutes. No, um, we, we, I can feel the frustration that it looked like we were tiring or were quite happy to kind of stroke the ball about as if possession was enough. And you knew Kilmarnock just needed one set piece to get themselves back in the game. They ended up, it was, again, it's the defenders again. The, the, I think it was Ash Taylor nods the ball down um, to right the other centre half. And he, he this ball is absolutely cracking finish for the fella. But we're not at the races when it comes to the battle with the centre halves, opposition centre halves. We Davis and Golson, it should be enough uh, to, to deal with these guys. Absolutely wasn't. And it was a terrible, uh, terrible goal to lose. And you know you've then got three minutes and you know you're going to have a few a few minutes of injury time. So I think it worked out six, seven minutes to go. In the end, it was a really shaky finish. But we did get there. Um, and as I say, we're winning. We're, we're still winning. Chris Boyd made a cracking point um, on the Sky Sports coverage after the game saying that 
you know, Michael Beale is going to these venues, really difficult venues, venues that have given Rangers problems. You know, even Dingwall, you know, as we crashed and burned at Dingwall this time last season, he's got a win there. Uh, he's got a win at Tanadice, another venue that's really tricky for us. Hibs uh, are always better against us at Ibrox than they are at Easter Road. Um, usually, he, he's beat them in his first competitive match in charge of us. And uh, even League Cup semi final has been an absolute nightmare. Hamden on a Sunday has been a nightmare for Rangers over the last seven or eight years. And uh, Michael Beale's, you know, done the business there. Uh, on Sunday, so we're not being any way harsh about it. Rugby Park's a, a terrible venue for Rangers uh, over the last five or six years, so he, he's got a result there. He is still um, at the early point of his reign, but the last team to beat Rangers in a match uh, was St Johnston at McDermott, and that's where Michael Beale goes next. So myself and Brian Archer will be on the pod on Friday. Uh, to discuss that, to, to preview, to have a, a more in-depth review of all the action at uh, Rugby Park this evening, but also to have a look ahead to Michael Beale's first match as manager in the Scottish Cup at McDermott Park on Saturday. So please enjoy us for uh, please join us for that and uh, have a wee whiskey and calm yourself down. We at least go three points tonight. Thanks, folks. Cheers now.